Hi, this is Courtney Butler, and um, it's Sunday morning here in Arkansas, and I woke up, and I turned on my social media, and I noticed that um, one of my main teachers is teaching a yoga retreat this weekend, and um, I say my main teacher uh, works for me. It helps me in my school. Um, also, one of my best friends, and a couple of my students that I trained to be teachers were at the retreat, and I thought, wow, it's the first year in seven years I haven't put on a big weekend retreat this time of year. And so, um, while I'm ecstatic about that, <laughs> because, you know, you do something for a long time, you get tired, um, I thought I could write a book on the subject, and I might, I might write a little small ebook on the subject or do a big webinar on this. Um, I've done so much consulting over the years. I wrote a long um, online article on a Yoga Alliance website forum that they used to have on this, and I got a ton of response. So I would like to say, first of all, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to my website, balanceyogaandwellness.com for more uh, resources. I've written hundreds of articles on my blog. Um, I've written a book, The Mud and the Lotus, a guide and workbook for yoga students, which is available at, at Alia Press or on amazon.com and other booksellers online. So, this, I want to give some basic information about hosting yoga retreats. First of all, and this is for yoga teachers, first of all, if you have no experience in event planning, I would suggest you start small. And I would probably suggest you start small regardless. Start by offering a workshop first because that organization and administrative experience is going to be invaluable to you. Showing up and teaching a workshop or you know an intensive whatever is the easy easy part the administrative part is the hard part and collecting money marketing your event I mean you got to let people know what's going on what you have going on you got to find space you got to decide what you're gonna offer um, any kind of amenities or anything like that sorry about the clicky clack that's one of my little puppies in the background and so make sure that you have some some experience start small secondly um, you want to then offer an all-day event with another teacher or teachers and um, you don't have to have other teachers it might just be you teaching both sessions and you have like a one-day yoga event you might want to add you know offering some food and things like that this is going to be a great experience and one of my teachers, Larry Payne, PhD, has written a ton of books, but one of his books is called, um, it's, I think it's The Business of Doing Yoga, and I think it's available on Amazon as well, but it also has a lot of information on offering a yoga day. That's a great way to get some experience without a lot of the headaches. Thirdly, when you're ready to do an overnight event, you're going to have to find a location. I spent a full year looking for a location. I finally, it was funny, it was in my face the whole time. I ended up going to the church camp that my children went to and that I went to um, that is a Presbyterian church camp here in Arkansas. And um, I ended up using them and it was great. I used them for seven years. That's another thing, consistency, consistency, consistency. If something isn't broken, don't fix it. So I stayed with the same people for seven years and I started small. Their minimum number of people at the time, I wanna say was 20 to 25. You have to include, your, you know, I included myself in that. And I started with that number of people. A lot of yoga teachers don't understand that you have to have money up front to book these uh, these places. So they're going to require a deposit. And I want to say our deposit was maybe 10% or maybe it was like, you know, I think it was $500. That, so I would make that deposit, you guys, a year in advance. Yes. A year in advance because if you don't grab the prime spots then you're not going to um, be able to get them so I would book it a year in advance I would start marketing um, usually at least nine months in advance so what you want to look for is a place that has um, clean facilities comfortable facilities now we had shared cabins that slept up to five people with a community bathroom and we had private rooms and I'm not 
I'm not going into all of that in this conversation, but they also need to um, have food, meals that they serve, and ideally they're willing to cook vegetarian because so many yoga teachers are vegetarian or vegan or have special needs. You can't accommodate everybody's needs, but that's a whole, again, another conversation. Then you want to make sure there's a, first of all, <laughs> you've got to have a big open space. The church camp that I worked with had a community activities building that had great audio equipment. So these are all things you have to think about. And if you would like to consult with me, you can go to balanceyoganwellness.com or you just put Courtney Butler Yoga in the search engine and I usually pop up. Um, I have very, very reasonable rates for phone and email. So if you would like to consult with me, just go online, book a session or email me and we'll set something up. I would be happy to do that for you. I guarantee you, I can save you as much money as you would make. I mean, lose, I can save you the money not by not losing it. Because if there's mistakes to be made, I've probably made them and I've done a lot of things right. But because I've been in the business so long in Arkansas, myself and my teachers were kind of the pioneers and um, we had to kind of figure things out on our own and what a valuable lesson that has been. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.